Hello everyone and welcome to our UCAS presentation. I'm Mrs Ray, a Head of Careers. The aim in this presentation is to look at the advantages of university, then look at how to apply, how we run the process in school, and finally a quick overview of funding. You'll find a set of briefing notes which you can download from the website, which will give some more detail and useful links. Firstly, we do realise that university is not for everyone. We are here to help all our students with whatever they would like to apply for. We recommend applying for university if students are unsure, as it buys time to think and look at alternatives. However, there are many advantages of university. It offers fantastic learning opportunities. The development of thinking abilities, the speed of processing information, studying for the enjoyment and interest of a subject, and clearly these things are likely to feed into greater job opportunities later on. For many students, university is a time for learning greater independence, developing new interests and friendships, which often last a lifetime. It does cost money, so it's worth looking at the financial benefits. Statistically, graduate salaries are higher than non-graduate, uh, potentially £227,000 more over a lifetime. Most applications for university in the UK go through UCAS. It has a subsidiary system, UCAS Conservatoire, which is for performance-based courses such as dance, drama and music. There are a few situations which require direct application to an institution. Applying in any other country, including the Republic of Ireland, is done using a separate application system, and there are details in the briefing notes to help with these. I'm going to take a few minutes to talk through the UCAS application process. Firstly, the time scale. Students wanting to study at Oxford or Cambridge and those wanting to study medicine, dentistry or veterinary sciences are already aware that they have an early deadline of the 15th of October. We aim to have their forms completed by the 30th of September so that we can process their references and send them off in good time around the 11th of October. I will work with the medicine, veterinary and dentistry applicants as well as the conservatoire students. Miss Lunny will work with Oxbridge applicants. All the other applicants have a deadline of the 26th of January. However, many universities will start offering places as soon as they receive applications. For this reason, we set a deadline of the 15th of October and we aim to process and send all the forms by the 12th of November. The UCAS form is completed online. Uh, we started the process during careers classes in June and pupils have detailed instructions which are also available on the Google Classroom. They need to create a UCAS hub and this will give them access to the application form but also useful tools such as a comparison tool um, to allow them to compare different features of the of courses they're interested in and a personal statement builder. They can apply for up to five courses and this section will take significant research in terms of looking at the content of courses and the location and so on. They need to check that the entry requirements for courses are realistic with a spread of grades so that there's an option if A-levels don't go quite as well as is hoped. I would recommend the Discover Uni website, which is a good one for comparing courses. One thing you might like to know is that courses do not go on the form in order of preference. In fact, the universities don't see the other courses on the form at all. Applications can be made for 2022 entry or they can be for deferred entry um, to facilitate a year out. There is an option on the form to nominate another person to have access. This could allow a parent to speak to UCAS or to a university on behalf of a student, for example. There's also an option to share data with the school and this allows us to see offers as they come in and it makes, us, makes it much easier for us to spot any issues. The personal statement can require quite a lot of work. Students have booklets with printed guidance and they've had detailed guidance in their careers classes and on Google Classroom. There is a personal statement tool on the UCAS website which takes them through step by step and plenty of other advice online. I would emphasise that this does need to be very specific to the individual student and to their course choice um, and it's very important not to be tempted to lift an example um, from somewhere else. The most important part of the personal statement is to explain why they want to study their chosen course. This should take up about half of the statement. It should mention work experience, especially if it's relevant to the course or the career, and activities inside and outside school and positions of responsibility. It's very important to tease out the skills that have been gained through these things rather than just listing them. 
and they also need a, con a concluding statement summarising and emphasising why they would be suited to study their chosen course. In school, we will allocate a teacher to each student and they will carry out a UCAS guidance interview. And students need to bring a printout of their whole UCAS form, including their personal statement to this interview. And the teacher will work through it with them, checking it's complete, making sure the course choices are realistic and, um, and their personal statement is strong. After the interview, um, corrections can be made and then um, you need to click pay and send. And this will send the form through to me. I will then check it one more time. If necessary, I can return it for further edits. After editing, it needs to be sent again, but UCAS will only take the payment the first time. Once the form is finalised, we will then write the reference, we'll attach it to the form and we'll send it off to UCAS. UCAS then sends the form to each university. After that, some students may have interviews to attend and these are likely to be run remotely this year. For a few courses, students may need to take exams and they should be well aware of those before they apply. Um, those might be things like the UCAT or the BMAT or the LNAT. Um, and it's the student's responsibility to ensure they are registered in good time for these. Then the universities can do one of three things. They can reject an applicant, they can give a conditional offer with grades to obtain, or occasionally they give an unconditional offer. A conditional offer will be expressed as grades, such as ABB, or as UCAS tariff points, such as 120 points. Sometimes they give both in the offer, um, such as 120 points to include an A in chemistry. The tariff points are available on the UCAS website, and I've also put them into the briefing notes. There are some UCAS points available for other qualifications, such as music exams, but universities decide whether to count those as part of an offer. Once students receive a reply from all their courses, they have to make a decision. For most, the deadline will be in June. They need to accept one course as their firm offer, which means it's their top choice. If they get the grades, that's where they will go. They then accept an insurance offer, which needs to be lower grades as this is their fallback option if their A-levels don't go as well as they hope. These are binding, they are committing to go to their firm offer course if they get the grades, or to their insurance, though in practice there's often a little bit of leeway in this. There is a two-week two cooling off period to change their minds if needed. If a student receives no offers, they become eligible for UCAS Extra, which will allow them to apply for one more course at a time. This only applies, however, if they used all five spaces on their form originally, so we would recommend that they do that from the start. I'm going to take a minute to look at some other options. The first is higher level apprenticeships, where a company offers employment and study at the same time. You'll find details in the briefing notes of a few companies who regularly offer this, and the workplus.app is a central website for Northern Ireland apprenticeships at all levels. And really you need to be looking at at least level four apprenticeships. Some of these higher level apprenticeships require direct application to the company, others require a place on the UCAS form, so you need to have a look at those um, before you go ahead. Some higher level apprenticeships result in a full degree as well as paid employment, others offer the chance to get professional qualifications. Another option is applying abroad, again you'll find more details in the briefing notes. The Republic of Ireland universities have their own applications processed through the Central Admissions Office. There are many uni European universities offering courses, often in English, and you can find some advice on the UNICAS website, and the Fulbright Commission offers advice and help in applying to US universities. Um, we'll say a few words about foundation degrees. Um, we'll spend a bit of time in December of Year 14 in careers classes looking at foundation degrees and other options to encourage students to have a backup option. For example, a one-year HNC in engineering at Belfast Met or CERC can be used for admission to an engineering degree at QUB. A two-year HND with good enough grades may be used to go into second-year engineering at Queen's. Some of these courses need direct application to the college, so that might be Belfast Met or CERC or somewhere like that, but some of them do go through UCAS, so I would recommend taking a look at some of these courses um, in advance in case you're going to need a place on your UCAS form. Now to turn to finance, 
All the detail on finance is available on the Student Finance NI website. So I would recommend you take a look there. All students will be entitled to loans for their tuition fees. Loans for living costs are also available and part of that amount depends on household income. Some students may be eligible for a grant, which doesn't need to be repaid in place of part of the loan, again, depending on household income. Applications for finance are done online and they usually go live in March. Early applications mean the money is guaranteed to be ready for the start of the academic year. Applying later on means the money might be late. There are also bursaries and scholarships available in all universities for a variety of courses. I've given a link on the briefing notes to help research these. For example, at Queen's, there's a scheme called Lloyd's Scholars, which can provide up to £16,500. Ulster University, meanwhile, has a list of 30 different scholarships to apply for. I'll leave you with a summary of the key dates. Do get in touch and encourage your son or daughter to chat to us if we can be of any help. I would encourage you again to make sure the form isn't left until the last minute, as it can take quite a while to research courses and to work on the personal statement in particular. Thank you very much for watching. If you have questions, please do get in touch.